It's a beautiful day here in Appalachia. I'm sitting out here under the shade by the chicken chicken coop. I guess the chickens are keeping me company. And what I've been doing is going through all my seeds. We're so behind in planting our garden this year. But this week, we're hopeful. Uh, it's going to be good planting days, and Matt's going to actually take off work, and we're going to try to plant the whole thing in one day. So what I've been trying to do is get out the seeds so that we'll just be ready to go, ready to jump right in and do it. We have all of our tomatoes and peppers uh, planted. We have potatoes and the early spring stuff that we planted, but this is our big push of planting this week will be, I think of the squash and the cucumbers and the melons and the beans and all those things. We eat a lot of green beans. We eat them, we can a lot of them, and, or we can all of them. Uh, we prefer to can instead of freeze, but we eat those all through the winter. So that's a, one of our hugest crops is the green beans. Um, so I'm really excited though to get all that stuff, the thinking of those. I'm, I'm happy the tomatoes and peppers are doing good, but I'm really anxious to, to get the squash and the cucumbers and the beans all planted. And this year, I'm excited to try some new varieties. We try a few varieties of different things just about every year. And, it, and if it's something we really like, then we just keep planting it from then on, that becomes ours. Uh, sometimes that happens and you stumble on one you really love and then sometimes it's, it doesn't quite compare to one of your favorites, for instance, if it's okra or something like that. Several years ago, I tried the Jing Orange, that's a red variety of okra, and I just, we just loved it. And so we've grown it every year since then. I think it was, it may have been the year before last, Katie got me some different kinds of okra for uh, Christmas seeds. I think one of them was Silver Queen. We love Silver Queen corn, so we thought we'd really like it, but, and it was okay. It wasn't that it was bad, but it just didn't compare to our favorite. So this year though, I am excited to try a lot of heirloom uh, varieties that I've never tried before that actually come from Western North Carolina here where I live and Debbie at uh, Bryson Farm Supplies where a lot of those come from so I'm I'm so excited about that but I think I've got it narrowed down now uh, as Pap used to say your eyes are bigger than your belly like on Thanksgiving or Christmas or something like that when you fill your plate with all that goodness and then you really can't eat it all so I may have done that my eyes may be bigger than my garden area but this is what I'm, this is at least I've got it narrowed down to this. I may have to whittle it down tomorrow or uh, when we actually start planting, but we'll see. So first up, I've, we've got lettuce and spinach and uh, some kale growing. We've been eating, but I would like to start a little bit more. So this is one, and so many people have sent us seeds. Bless you, thank you so much for sending them. We couldn't, can't grow them all, but I certainly will keep them all, and I will plant them as the years come along. That's the amazing thing about seeds is that they continue to be viable and be, be, be good. Uh, your germination rate is better if they're fresher, but you can still plant a seed that's 20 years old and it may grow and produce for you. So that's the miracle of seeds and I, I really thank you for blessing, blessing me with them, the, all of you who've sent me seeds. So this one actually was from Karen Allen and it's just a lettuce salad bowl grain and I just picked it out because it says it's a container variety. So I thought I could put it in one of my grow bags. It would be, be really easy. Let's see, I brought me some rubber bands. I'm going to rubber band these together. Now, two of my favorite lettuces to grow when it comes to lettuce, uh, my very favorite is Jericho. It has a good flavor. Uh, it works perfectly for kilt lettuce, wilted lettuce, whatever you call it. It's great on sandwiches and salads. It kind of has a... Um, holds up a little bit better than black seeded Simpson. That's what Granny and Pap always grew. Uh, but the best thing about it, I think, is it can take some heat. It don't just go to seed. It, it, it lasts pretty good in the heat. So that's my favorite is Jericho. And I have some of that growing, but I've, I'm going to plant some more of it, just a little. And then another one that I really like, and now that I feel of the packet i don't think there's nothing in it so i won't be planting it but it is paris island uh, it's a romaine i like it a lot too but it, it's totally empty so that one i might as well not even put that one in there it must be one i put back in there the day i was planting it and then i had some uh, kale the dinosaur and uh, that's probably what i'll just plant a little bit more of that so there's my my greens that was pretty simple and probably really managed to do all of them. Now let's talk about the squash. So when it comes to squash, basically uh, think of summer squash. We grow 
zucchini and yellow squash that's what we like to grow so the black beauty we typically grow that every year we usually grow the crook neck and the straight neck of the yellow um, this is a different kind also but from karen allen is ford hook zucchini i usually grow the black beauty like i said or i think i said that but this is ford Hu ford hook zucchini um, so it, it looks about like that so i'm going to try it this is dark green squash summer let's see if this is uh oh it's a different kind too it's mottled green so maybe i'll try one or two of those but it's like a zucchini and then the crook neck and the straight neck and the straight neck and another black beauty so i can't plant all these as you can see some of them's already been opened and um, I plant out of the same packet, maybe even two years, three years in a row. And then, of course, I plant grannies, too. So some of those may end up down at grannies. That's that. And then I, I can't resist. Me and Katie's planted so many flowers. But when I was going through all this, I found some more flowers I wanted to grow. So these are uh, chartreuse and purple. Look how beautiful those are. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Really pretty. So these are also from Karen Allen. And then Connie, Connie had sent me a lot of seeds. And these were, I, I meant to plant these earlier and I forgot, but these are actually um, hollyhocks. And I had hollyhocks and something happened to them. So they're gone. So I need to plant these. And I think hollyhocks, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but it takes two years. So, but still I need to get started on them. And then Brenda had sent me a lot of uh, zinnias, I call them. Somebody told me I say that wrong, so I don't say it, but that's what we call them is zinnias. Our old maids, old maids, we call them that too. So um, she, I love, she's even wrote to herself where these were at, east of Cottage, uh, Queen Lime with a question mark. So they may be that beautiful green color too. So I'm going to plant those. Surely I can find one more little place to plant some. And I don't, I don't think I planted any zinnias, old maids at Granny's, so I need to, need to do that for her. Now, let's see, let's do the okra. It's pretty short. So it is my Jing Orange. There's two of those. And then this one, uh, Wayne and Vicki sent me, says 2022 okra, and it was eight foot tall. My Jing Orange gets really tall too, so I don't know what that'll be, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a try. And then this one, Shirley Williams uh, sent to me. It's Baby Bubba Hybrid, Baby Bubba Hybrid. So I guess maybe it's gonna be me little dwarf plants. So maybe I can think about that wherever I'm planting it. That might be a good one to plant at Granny's. She loves okra too. So that is that. Then my cucumbers. A few years ago I learned about, and I can't remember, it was from a video from somebody else's video on YouTube, but about silver slicers, cucumbers, and we've been planting them and we just love them. They do so good for us. They do look funny in the garden because they're the pale, you can see pale like that, but they're really prolific and they have great taste and they hold up good for, for pickles. I mean, it's just like, that's just one of my favorite cucumbers. Here's some of my own seeds I saved, so I have plenty of those. Let's see, I also like the Boston cucumber. I really like, that's one I usually do every year, and the Arkansas little leaf. I love that one. There's another Boston. This is one, um, I think I planted this one last year, but I can't really remember nothing about it. It may have just got mixed in with everything else, but it was an old time cucumber and Mary Combs sent me that one. So I might try to plant it and kind of isolate it this year. See, see how that works. This is the National Pickling Cucumber, heirloom seed. I don't know where I got that one. This one was from Trina Hayes and it's an Armenian white cucumber it's kind of got a strange shape to it so i thought well i should try it since i like the other white one so much and this one is just homemade pickles cucumber well that certainly certainly sounds like it would be a good one and then this one uh was from richard hutchins and i can't remember it's the it's in a different language so i can't read it but uh he said it was a great great cucumber so I'm, I'm excited about cucumbers this year. I love them every year, and I love to make all kinds of pickles with them. 
But last year, I made the best dill pickles that I have ever made in all my years of chasing down dill pickle recipes. And so, and I only made four jars of them. I learned from Justin Metcalf. I can, I'll link to his video below so you'll be prepared too. Hands down, I've tried fermented, I've tried making them in a crop, I've tried all different ways. And the thing with dill pickles, if you've ever tried to make them, you may have found out is they get soggy and that's no fun. But then, you know, the ones you buy in a store, who knows how they get them to stay that crispy most of the time. But these were crispy. They stayed crispy. And I even used cucumbers that were kind of like on the eh, about going, you know, it wasn't the fresh optimum day of picking them. Because I thought, well, I just want to try it, but I don't want to waste my good cucumbers, but I've got these others. Anyway, and I only made four quarts because I didn't know if, I, if it would work or if I'd be satisfied with it. They're hands down best dill pickles I've ever made. So I can't wait to try that again and to make more. Matt was like, you need to make, you know, about 30 quarts of those. I was like, I know, I really do. So I love watermelons, love them, love them, love them. I just eat watermelon just a little while ago. I eat it pretty much every day in the summer. Most of what I eat, I have to buy, but I still love it. I'm always chasing growing watermelons here. I don't get enough sunshine to really grow big watermelons uh, here on the north side of the mountain. But the sugar babies, they do really well for me. They don't, you know, always get as big as uh, most of the sugar babies you buy in a store might be like a soccer ball. Mine's usually smaller than that, but they're still tasty. So this one, uh, Shelly sent me, and I tried it last year, but it was late in the season, so I can't wait to try it again. And it's an heirloom, and I know I'm going to butcher the way you say it, but it's P-A-T-R-I-M-O-I-N-E. And so she thought, uh, or I mean, uh, Shelly thought that it would be good here with my lack of sunshine and my, and the, my climate. If I remember right, that's from Canada. I may be wrong on that, and I'm sorry if I am. Uh, one of the best little uh, cantaloupes that I have good luck with, this one's Hell's Best. That one's okay, but it's actually the Minnesota Midget. That does really good for us, so I usually plant some of those. And then I've got my sugar babies. And it's been many years since I tried the Moon and Stars. I never did have the sugar babies do better for me, but I'm going to try them again this year just because so many people tell me that's what they grow in their garden that, you know, can't really grow the big whoppers. Uh, so I'm going to try it again. I've tried it in the past, and but we'll see. Maybe this will be the, maybe this will be the year. So these are my winter squash here. This is one I wanted to try last year, and I think I did try it, but it did not grow and did not produce anything. My winter squash didn't do as good last year as they usually do, but it is just sweet meat. I just liked the way that it sounded. Um, it says it's roasted winter squash is great for cold or warm salads, used to make pure purees or eaten hot as a side or even as a main dish. And then it just goes, tells you how to cook it. So that one sounded good. I love my um, white cushaws and my green and white striped cushaws so I'm always always planting them Raymond and Gretchen sent me some a, a fresh supply of my green and striped cushaw I have several videos on those I can link to but they are they're so great because they um, storage they store a long time but then they're so tasty too we had cushaw soup one day last week from some I'd put in the freezer so they're so good candy roaster and this was also from raymond and gretchen love the candy roaster i think it has a better flavor than pumpkin but i am going to grow some pumpkin let's see if this one in here yeah uh, a friend sent me this long island cheese pumpkin and i tried them and again they did not grow but hopefully they will this year says it's the best pumpkin ever ever so I'm going to try that one again. There's more of the green and white. I like butternuts. They do good for us. And they're also really good storage uh, pumpkins or storage winter squash. And then my Chambers Creek pumpkin. That's my favorite. So I'm going to, going to do that one. This is another one that I thought, I swore I planted last year. Last year, Matt and I made a bed on the back side of the greenhouse, and it, it didn't do that great, but it did grow a little bit. But this year, I hope it'll be even better, like the second year in, you know, with adding more compost. 
I thought I planted one of these, but what it actually grew, if I did plant this, was a spaghetti squash. So I'm going to try it again. It says it's Mrs. Amerson's, which maybe it's just supposed to be a... It don't tell me. Seems like I thought it was something else. Maybe I should look for a photo of that first. I'm not against spaghetti squash, but if I have I only have so much room, I would rather plant a pumpkin or a, a, a butternut or something. So either I got mixed up and really planted a spaghetti squash or that's what this is, Mrs. Amerson. So you tell me if you know, you can tell me. And then there was um, from my friend Debbie at Bryson uh, Farm Supply, a cow pumpkin. That was some heirloom seed she had. I'm gonna try it. I'm excited about that one. And I'm, I'm so curious to see if it will be similar to the Chambers Creek pumpkin, since it's kind of the same general area. So, let's see, let's do the peas next. Me and Matt have fallen in love with growing peas. Uh, not so much the spring variety, although those are really good. I didn't plant any this year. I had big hopes, but it just didn't happen. But the more of the summer peas, think of the Mississippi pink eye. We grew them last year, adored them. And the red zipper peas, like red hull peas. So I have some of those purple hull peas, those are. I have some Crowder peas. Jim Cassida, my friend, shared those with me, and we really like those. And these are the red hull, red hull ones. And then the pink eye, Mississippi pink eye, saved these from ours from last year. We really love those. And those were a, a bush pea. Those others will need something to climb on. And then I had Crowder peas and Holstein. Holstein? Holstein, I think. Pea. I can't read Corey's writing. Corey was writing for me that day. This is from Debbie. Let's see what they look like. I forgot. It's been so long. Ooh, oh, it is Holstein, because you can see, if I can hold it up, it looks like a, probably not, I'll take a picture and put it on the screen, because I'm probably not focusing it, but it looks like a Holstein cow. That's how it's, how it's uh, colored. So that one will be fun to find out about. So as you can, you can see, my eyes may be bigger than my garden garden place now i think the only thing i have left is the beans except when i was digging all that stuff out from debbie look what i found onions they should have been planted they're still really good though really firm but i'm definitely gonna we're gonna plant those tomorrow somewhere you never have too many onions so i just forgot that that was that i had onions from her forgot so let me drag this stuff over here so most of the time, the beans the, that we love to can and eat all through the winter, we eat beans about every week, is um, we love greasy beans. Now I grew up on white half runners. That's what Granny and Pap always planted. And I like them. I do. I like them. But I really love the greasy back beans. So a greasy back or greasy bean just looks like it's, it's just a, a pole bean that climbs. But it looks like someone's took a little bit of olive oil or... Uh, grease or whatever bacon grease or something and just lightly like skimmed the outside of the hull it just gives it a little shine and I really like them and that's what we've grown for years and our favorite variety of them uh, and we've kind of saved our seeds so we have some but I don't know if you can still find them but was years ago when we first started growing them was WNC market that was our favorite greasy bean but we've grown like there's a Doyce Chambers that's a good one um, there's one that's got a lazy wife. That's one. That one's pretty good. And there's one um, that's got like a reddish uh, little thing running through it. That's a good one. I can't remember the name of it. Red or pink something. But a couple of years ago, someone told us about rattlesnake beans. And I can't remember. It may have even been someone in a comment. So we tried the rattlesnake beans. So we've grown them for two years. And we adore them. We love them. Now, they, they're a climbing bean, too. And they get like a purpley mottled look a, along the bean. And if you let them grow, just continue to let them grow, they get to be a really big bean. And I think a lot of people actually let them grow until they're at that drying stage, and then they dry the bean and use them as a dried bean. We've been picking them when they're smaller and eating them as a fresh green bean or canning them, you know, using them to can. Uh, and we just adore them. 
So we had been doing like a small area in the back with the rattlesnake beans and still doing our greasy beans in the front with our two big long rows. Well, Matt last year said, mm -mm, no more, we're gonna do the rattlesnakes in the front because they are so prolific. And if you're gonna pick beans, he says he wants to pick beans. He wants to have, you know, a five gallon bucket every time we pick. Uh, or, or two five gallon buckets. So we're gonna, we're gonna do that this year. So we have a lot of, of rattlesnake beans, so that should be good. So that's two of our, there's our, our big ones for those. And then a lot of these, let's see, what else did we grow last year? Probably the only bush bean we'll do this year. We did peanut beans last year and Matt didn't, he, they love, he loves the taste, I love it, and we can some of them, but he doesn't like picking them, a uh, bush bean, because you have to bend over. Now, a lot of people with peanut beans, what they do is they let them grow, let them mature, and then they pull the whole plant up and then pick the beans off and discard it. I just can't hardly do that because if when you do that, there'll be some beans that are little and still, you're like, well, they could still, if they just had another week or two, they could still grow. So we just kept picking them until they were done. And um, that's one of the reasons he didn't like it. But we will plant, there's a Yance bean that was from the Junaluska area of my county. If you've watched any of my videos with Granny Hicks, this is from, from where Granny Hicks grew up, from a different family, but in that same area, from the Lambert family. And so it is a bush bean, but we really like it. So I'm gonna, we'll, we'll for sure plant some of them. I've got some ants joining me all of a sudden. Another one that we grew last year that Matt was just crazy about and I really liked too and it was really prolific was someone sent us, let's see if I can right here, I think his name, if I can find his name, I think it's Chad. And it was a, a bean that had been passed down in his family and they just called it the Grammy bean. It was a, again a pole bean, a white bean, you see the white here. And it was just so prolific and so good. This is some of the ones we saved from last year. So I hope I can continue and, and growing it and saving some to actually give back to him. That would be nice for me to do. So we're gonna grow those again. Let's see if there's any others of the... I think that was it. So now it's all the ones I'm excited about growing for the first time. And I'm not going to be able to grow a lot of them. I have done realize that because, as I said, my eyes are bigger than my garden area. But I hope I can maybe grow like three, three beans of each of them or something. I don't know how I'm going to figure that out. And I have, not because it's hard, but because it's me, <laughs> a, a lack on my department. I have a terrible time keeping track of things like that. I always think I'll go back and I'm not prepared when I go to the garden and I think I'll go back and mark them and I never do and then I can't remember. So I'm gonna do better this year. I'm gonna try my best. And a wonderful subscriber sent me these yellow plastic markers. So I'm gonna use those and thank you so much. I really appreciate you sending them. So I'm gonna try my best to make sure they're all marked even if it is just three beans. So these are the ones from Debbie from the Bryson Farm Supply. This is, uh, let's see, that's a, let's see if we can, we've got two different kinds, kind of. We've got lima beans, butter beans is what people call them here. So this is Cherokee from Roy Lambert. We were talking about the uh, Yance bean being a Lambert family. This is from Cherokee, North Carolina, and that's a lima bean. And this is a Christmas one, Christmas lima bean. Let me open this one and just show you how pretty these beans are. So pretty. And I've never really grown them until, I mean, grown any kind of butter bean until the last two years, and we've just fell in love with them. You can just see they're really, really pretty, like a purpley with pink, pink in them. Mm, look like jewels. This is a green bean, a climbing bean, is Hazel Creek. So Hazel Creek's a beautiful area if you ever have the opportunity to visit. This one just says Bill Mathis. Let's see if it's a bean. Oh, it is butter beans, so it's, a, again, a butter bean. Oh yeah, I can feel them. Let's see what color they are. I need to get me some little plastic bags. Ooh, I'm just tearing this one all to pieces. I don't wanna tear that off. Oh, it's pretty too. Ooh, very pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna have to keep those. And since these are from the same general area, you know, a lot of these may overlap, but um, I'm glad Debbie documented who brought them in. 
So this one is a, we didn't think about how we, Joanne Sutton, Daz, white bean, bush bean. No, that's a bush bean. So that's a, I may have to have to grow another bush bean instead of wasn't going to, but I'll have to. This is again from Roy Lambert. He had give Debbie a lot, a lot of seeds. He collected them. So it says it's a soupy bean. So that may be one like thinking about drying uh, for keeping them for dried beans. I may have to, that may be how I kind of divide these tomorrow thinking about if I get to do a second planting of beans, like maybe about June or July, that might be one I wait on and do that. So this Cage Cove Greasy Beans, this is a different greasy, very tasty and prolific, bears very well. So I definitely wanna try that one as a greasy. This one is a Preacher, is the name of it's an heirloom, uh, Silva, North Carolina bean, a pole bean, Preacher, Preacher bean. Of course you wanna try that one. Woo, throwing my rubber bands. This one is a heirloom runner, was case knife. I love that, because I call a kitchen knife like a butter knife. Uh, comes with your silverware. That's a case knife to me. That's what I grew up calling it. So it's a case knife. I guess the bean gets really long. Nantahala area origin, and that was from Johnny Shields. So I'm excited about trying that one. Here's a lazy wife, um, but it doesn't say that it's a, a greasy one like that one I was familiar with but it's an heirloom and it's from Cherokee again, Cherokee, North Carolina. It might've come from Ram Lambert too, it doesn't say though. And um, this one was a mystery Cherokee bean. I wonder what it looks like, let's see. Was, uh, Debbie was wonder it's wonderful that her store and her family, her parents before her, they collected and her husband especially loved to collect beans. So it's just a white, oh, it's got a little brown place on it. Ooh, that's interesting has like a little, a little brown, well, I threw that one on the ground. It has a little brown, uh, kind of like a paint horse or something, a little brown place. So, ooh, I definitely want to try that one. Let's see. And then, okay, that was all the ones from Debbie. Then this one, you can see all those beautiful colors, just like jewels, let's see. It was from uh, John Sullivan, and him and his wife, they live in Mississippi, and they they wanted us to, they thought we would like these old-timey speckled butter beans. They are running beans. They will produce all summer until frost kills them. Mm, that sounds wonderful. So I definitely want to try them. And they look very similar to, uh, oh, they're so beautiful, the colors are. I don't know, it's probably not showing up on the camera, but there's like purples and pinks and maroons and browns, and then there's a white one in there, or a cream one. So I definitely wanna, wanna try those. And I think these come from um, Don Cassida, the Cherokee Turkey Gizzard. So I wanna try those. I've tried those one time before, and it, it was a big bean, but it was it looked like this bean, but it was bigger. So that's interesting. I may try those. And then these, the very last ones that I was hoping to try, came from Betty Jean Hogan. I've done several videos with Betty Jean. I'll, I'll link to those if you've not seen her before. You'll love her. And she said they actually come just from between me and her, uh, the Carringers. So Hugh and Joanne Carringer had shared them with her and she saved these for seed, but Betty Jean don't grow a garden. So she said, take them home and grow them. That, that's the bean that uh, Hugh and Joanne uh, grow for every year. And I'd be interested, I need to ask them, was it passed down through the Carringer family or maybe through the Martin family? So that'd be interesting to find out. So I'm very excited. Um, and I'm glad that I went through all these so that we'll, uh, it's still going to be a process of me whittling down what we can actually plant. But at least I've, at least I've done the first go through. And, and with these beans, I want to plant all of them. So even if I can only plant maybe two or three of some of them, I'm going to try them just to see how they do. It's so exciting uh, to grow things. It's exciting to grow anything, even the, you know, if it's a, a seed packet that come from a store from Walmart or somewhere, just the miracle of seeing something grow and, and nurturing it, kind of taking care of it, giving it compost, making sure the bugs don't eat it, all that, and then harvesting that wonderful food to take inside and feed your family, feed yourself. Uh, it it kind of feeds you twice. It nourishes your body, your body, as Pap would say, your body 
but it also nourishes your brain somehow, your heart uh, growing, actually putting your hands in the good earth and, and growing something. But I think especially, even kind of takes it up a notch, up a level, is to be able to grow these like the ones that have been passed down through those families. Uh, what a wonderful thing for Debbie and uh, all the people like that who's tried to hold on to those old seeds. And even your own family, like I'm excited about growing my silver slicers that I, and I only saved those last year, but still, it's just like it, you're taking part of that goodness and continuing it. Um, you know, it's just, there's just something really special about that. I'm always, I'm all about uh, tradition and heritage and culture and passing down, whether it's knowledge, whether it's bean seed, you know, the way we talk, recipes, all those kind of things. That's just part of who I am. Uh, and one of the wonderful things about the culture of Appalachia is that it is family centered. And because of that, it is that kind of handing down to the next generation. That's just part of it. Um, and those memories uh, become so dear to you, whether it's, like I said, that Grandpa used to grow these in his garden and now I'm growing them, or even, you know, Cory and Katie with the silver slicers, they can say, oh yeah, I helped, I helped tend that last year and, and, and eat it and make pickles and now Mom can share her seeds with me, you know. So it's just something really special about that. I hope, as always, you enjoy visiting with me while I went through my seeds. I hope you'll, you'll drop back by because later this week, I'll share the video of us getting all the gardens planted.